Hi lovelies, this is Blossom and today I have another review, this time about a beautiful creatures tarot. So this deck is by J.R. Rivera, an artwork by Jasmine Beckett Griffiths. This is the second edition and it is published by Schiffer. Uh, yeah, I really wanted to do this review because, um, yeah, I saw uh, reviews from the first edition and yeah, a lot of people were a bit more critical when it comes to this deck, so I wanted to do this review as well because mostly what I saw was unboxings. I worked with this now for a while, for a few weeks, like a month or something. Yeah, and now I thought I can do that. First of all, we will have a look at the cards and then we will go into the book. Uh, just to show you the box, cards, book in there. It's a nice box, you have to say that. Let's have a look at the cards. So here they are. First I want to show you the gilding. We have purple gilding, which is really pretty nice, but it wears off quite quickly. Uh, this may have to do with that I riffle truffle. So I'm never overly excited because, you know, it just wears off, but it looks pretty. That's for sure. And then the cardstock itself. Uh, yeah, so some are interested in those things, some are not. The only thing I want to mention is normally with Schiffer decks, um, they are very glossy and they are definitely not. So they have a matte finish. Uh, I guess that many people will like that. I personally don't. I always like the, the, the heavy gloss because, as some of you may know, um, I read tarot a lot outdoors and I take them with into the forest and I don't always have a cloth with me so they just, you know, I have them on the, on the ground <laughs> and that's why very glossy is good. So they are not, so I don't take them outside as much. Um, yeah, but you know, somebody always <laughs> has to complain. I guess for, for other people that may be great. So first what I want to say, I just show you the cards. What I want really want to say is that this is of course no traditional tarot deck. So not with traditional symbols. Here we have the magician. Um, that's maybe you know, for a tarot beginner or some everybody who's looking for traditional symbolism and in, in the cards, that's not your deck. So this is pre-existing artwork, uh, and if you have the oracles by Jasmine Beckett Griffiths, you may recognize a few images. So it's not completely the same, but um, I just will show you because here the high priestess. One second. There we go, this is now a card of the um, Oracles of Shadow and Light. So we can find similarities even if it's not one by one. There we go. And as you see, the um, deck before the first edition had different names for the major arcana. And here we have again the traditional names and then uh, keywords with the high priestess, of course, in a wisdom, the empress with creativity, and the next card, the emperor, sovereignty, the hierophant with morals, the lovers. So this is one of the cards that changed the image so they are oh i should have looked that up before four or five cards that changed where the image are different the images are different um i think many people didn't like the lovers card so maybe you prefer that the chariot strings 
the hermit, the wheel. So and we always have those little stories that uh, J.R. Rivera writes in his book before he goes into uh, the meaning of the card. So every being on those cards have their little story. And I will read one just to give you an example. This alluring yet powerful pixie and her dragon friend only manifests on our planet Earth from time to time to do her bidding. She is invisible to the human eye, but there are times when she lets her presence be felt. This entity is unlike any others that has existed, and she is not to be taken lightly, for she possesses many powers. She is known to possess three abilities, fate, karma, and destiny. With the roll of her twenty-faced dice, a tool so powerful that we cannot begin to understand, and even if we did, we would not know how to conduct it, she will foretell the official and permanent outcome, an outcome that can't be avoided for the person she has bestowed the role upon. Her dragon friend is the keeper who tells her where she needs to go and who she needs to attend. So this is one example of a story. And I, like, I really like the dice as I am a, a Dungeons and Dragons <laughs> gamer, so... I can relate to the 20 side dice. Then justice with equality. The hanging one for the hanged man. I think that was before the swinging one. Perception. This one changed to death is now transformation. And it may seem that this card is maybe for a younger audience so they take this out I guess for that reason as she really I think this artwork really appeals to to younger audience but not only of course I'm not in my teens anymore in my 20s so um, and I still really enjoy the artwork so the devil is now the habit with dependency I think this one changed too yeah it does yeah Maybe if I can if I can find the images, I will blend uh, those in who changed. I have to look that up. Then the tower is the decaden decadence with abruption. That changed a bit too. I actually do like how he writes about that. So what he writes in the upright meaning, I just read a little bit of it, not all of it. He says, this card also denotes release. If you suppress or bottle painful memories or grudges for long, do consider the consequences. All that you've kept hidden inside will burst and the outcome will not be pretty. So there we see how he goes for the bottle here. Then the beautiful star card. It is just really, the artwork is lovely. And I, I never thought that I would go for this kind of artwork, but I started with the oracles and I, I wanted, you know, the, as I saw, first I wanted, I, I had a, <laughs> and I'm blah, blah, blah. So I had an eye on the first ed edition and I take always a bit longer to decide if I buy a deck or not. And then I saw there will be a second edition and yeah. So I waited for that one, Judgment and the World. Now we go into the minus and I'll go from 1 to 10 because I will have a special look at the court cards. So we don't have Ace of Swords but One of Swords before there was Ace of Airs or One of Airs, I, I don't remember anymore. And I think that bothered many people. Um, so they change it back again. Intellect. And we, ooh, I love that card. I really like it. Two of Swords with confu confusion. Yeah, and as I say, I was, I'm also looking for decks that are not so, you know, having always the same in images over and over again. 
uh, I was a bit bored by it. So I was looking for decks who goes a different way. And I heard many people say it was uh, that the images are forced into the meaning and because of the pre-existing artwork and everything. But you know, other decks have that as well. For example, the Chicoli Terror, and I see the Chicoli Terror is much more accepted, which is fine. You know, you like whatever you want. I don't care. But that's just saying. I was looking for something that is maybe not so obvious and not having the same images again. So here, the Seven of Swords with treachery. Eight of Swords with Imprisonment. You can see it in some cards, you know. This is for me pretty clear, the Eight of Swords. Nine of Swords, Anxiety. Okay, so let's have a look at that. Would you, would you actually see it immediately? So the guidebook is really cool to have to read the guidebook it is a deck where i would definitely recommend to um to read the guidebook and to work with the guidebook together with the cards ten of swords and what is interesting <laughs> i just remember this card now because i did a reading for for my husband um my husband doesn't really know the meanings of the cards, but uh, just by showing him the cards, but that's because that's what I do when I do a reading for him, I show him the cards, what do you see? And he actually sees a lot in those cards, especially this one was, uh, was something funny about it. Okay, so as I said, I just go until 10 and then the court cards later. So we go into the ones with energy. And I really liked that depiction of Ace of Wands because, um, yeah, that's how I see it. That's how I see the Ace of Wands. Number three with Patience. Four of Wands with Unity. Very nice Halloween-y. Five of Wands. So I could, go, oops, I could go and explain like the images one by one, but this is really what do you see? Does this artwork talks to you? Can you see something? What is again what I think is beginner beginner friendly is that you have a keyword at the bottom, but I would say in general. If you're completely new, to, well, this is just my opinion, all right? So uh, you don't have to listen to that. But just my opinion. If you're a complete beginner, and this would be your first tarot deck, I would go with a traditional tarot. Uh, that doesn't mean now it has to be right away it's missed, but something based on it, image-wise. And... Uh, you know that you understand the symbolism but I wouldn't say that this one cannot be for a beginner especially because also of the guidebook but yeah there is definitely missing the traditional symbolism and here we have the ten of ones hardship and again when you go into the book you will have a little story that explains you uh, about the being here because like this you don't see the ten of wands that's for sure then we come into the cups that you can see again two of cups with relationship I guess you can see that three of cups celebrations I th I that you can see four of cups again somehow you, you can see so it's more some cards you you see some cards you don't five of cups regret could also be a moon card now hold on for a second so i'm back i saw i'm sorry i thought i saw a similar card but this is now from 
uh, the uh, Shapeshifter Oracle, but it's not the same, so that's fine. <laughs> Good to know. So I'm not really sure if it's the same because I have the Australian version of both stacks, the Oracle of the Shapeshifters and um, the Oracle of Light, that sh light and sh shadow and light. Oh, ay ay ay. <laughs> And um, so I'm not sure if it's all the same cards like in the American version. Then moving on. Six of Cups with Memories. Number seven. So some images may be a bit similar, but there is actually no identical um, image in the tarot card really like that for the nine of cups and the ten of cups and then we go already into the pentacles the ace I should have brought all the aces together because they look nice together two of pentacles with flexibility you see that very clearly I think that's yeah that's a clear image three of Pentacles, which again there is a similar card, but not completely. But we have the two, which is here, closed eyes as here, and one in the middle. But they yeah, are never exactly the same, and I think that's about it. With the oracle, and well, it's possible that I missed something. Four of Pentacles with greed. Mm. Five of Pentacles. Do like that image. Six of Pentacles with generosity. I think that was the previous, on the first edition. This was on the box. This image. Then the Seven of Pentacles with progress. I really, I really love that image. I think um, for me this makes sense. Eight of Pentacles with practice. You can see that as well. Nine of Pentacles with rewards. And then the number ten with legacy. Oh yeah, legacy. I was talking about that. Completely forgot about that. That is the key word. Yeah. And then we also have. Let me check. Yeah. <laughs> we also have two extra cards that you can use or not. You are the one authenticity and then the paranormal. Now, I guess there were some confusions with that mask. You are the one authenticity. And in the book it says, this beautiful maiden is an outcast to the people in her village because of her physical attributes, which are very rare. The gods and goddesses blessed her by giving her a red streak across her eyes, platinum hair and light skin, as opposed to the people in her village who have black hair and dark skin and a black mask across their eyes. To them, this maiden is cursed and will bring nothing but bad omens to the village. Nonetheless, the maiden has disregarded the villagers' senseless assumptions and has travelled to another w village where there she will be accepted and loved for her unique attributes. So don't see it as a mask. However, this is what this book says. I remember when I saw this card, I remembered a card from... Uh, the Fairies Oracle by Brian Froud, who has also the mask. And the card here would be Sylvanius. I'm not in the mood to look for the card now, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, this would be the card. And what it says here, we wear the mask to look inward, seeing our true selves, not our false and fearful selves, but the beings of light that we truly are and what we have the potential to be. It becomes very difficult for us to make, to make excuses and blame others for our failures and fears once we have seen what we could be if we were willing, what in fact we already are but are not quite living up to. I thought, now this is, <laughs> sorry, 
uh, this is the part that I remember, I thought it was very odd that there is a mask of truth. It seemed to... There we go, there's the card again. It seemed to me that we use mask to hide truth rather than to reveal it. Oh no, Sylvanus assured me. First you put a mask on and hide, and then you take it off to reveal the truth. Very fairy. <laughs> so this is what I remembered and how I, how I see this card. Now let's go into the court cards. I set up one second. So as you see, the pages all have a, a similar, you know, there's a close-up of a face with flowers around. So page of swords with inspection, page of wands with venture, page of cups, inventiveness and page of pentacles, reliability. I actually, the only thing that isn't clear to me is the page of swords. The rest I really can see, the wands, I can see the cups, I can see the pentacles. And as I can see three, so it's easy for me to take that then as swords. Um, but yeah, maybe with foxglove, yeah. Okay, now it starts to make sense. Um, all right. So, and before those were called the nymphs, yeah, those are all the pages together. And I go back to the swords. Once again here, the page of swords. And now we come to the knight of swords. And then we have an astrological association with them. And before they were actually named as the signs, now they have their traditional names again. I find it very interesting to have that part because I have no... I'm really bad when it comes to astrology, I have no idea. I just know my own sign and that's, that's it, more or less. So to find it in a book is a bit tricky because it follows a different order. So the Knight of Swords is represented by Gemini. And again, we will see later in the book how this is set up. Then the Queen of Swords would be Libra. King of Swords would be Aquarius. That's me. Then again, the Page of Wands. Adventure. The Knight of Wands. Sagittarius. Then the Queen of Wands, Arius, King of Wands with Leo, um, yeah, Leo. <laughs> As I say, my astrology knowledge is bad. And then we come back to the Cups, Page of Cups. Then the Knight of Cups would be Pisces, that's my hubby. He's a very cute little mermaid and he will hate that. <laughs> <laughs> then the Queen of Cups, Cancer, you can actually see it there too, and then here, the King of Cups, and Scorpio, it drives me a bit nuts to, um, to find it in the book, I like my order, you know, Page, Knight, Queen, and King. And the last ones, the Pentacles, so Knight of Pentacles as Virgo. Then Queen of Pentacles, Capricorn, King of Pentacles as Taurus. There we go, those were all the cards. Now, I guess we have a look at the book now. Before I go into that, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I just want to say that um, my experience now with those cards is actually a good one. I think that this deck is very down to earth, even if it's, you know, very cutesy and, and, but it's very down to earth to me, very on point without lingering too much in spiritual spheres if you know what I mean so I think it's yeah I, I like it for that so the book has 161 pages and then you have room for a few notes in the back let's start at home so thank you and stuff 
contents as you can see then we start with of course the introduction a forward by Barbara Moore then about about beautiful creatures about this tarot deck how to use this deck and then we come into the spreads and they're really big points because he has a lot of spreads so we have of course one card then not past present future <laughs> but the beautiful and ugly card one represents the question option interest represents the beauty about it and card number three rep represents the ugly about it the mirror within with three cards beauty truth and light with three cards triage en croix mind over heart i like that one with card number one the situation then what your mind says outcome if you listen to your mind card number four what your heart says and number five outcome if you listen to your heart 30 day outlook voice of the beautiful creature which is actually also uh, very interesting i don't i can't read them all uh, family tree time after time lucid dreams mend a broken heart next best, best thing so you broke up what's coming next <laughs> it's a bit yeah well <laughs> Then astrological houses and a past life one as well. And then you also have an astrological game. And here you have the zodiac signs again with the elements. So that's nicely set up. I really like that. And really big points for that because you mostly you have past, present, past, present, future, one card and the Celtic cross. So thank you very much. Um, I've read somewhere, I didn't saw a video about that, but I've read it somewhere uh, complaining that there's no nice, you know, spread, it's not, it's just in a row. I couldn't care less about that, <laughs> really, that's all right, you know, <laughs> it's completely all right. Um, yeah, there we go. And then we come into the Major Arcana. So for the Major Arcana and the... Uh, the, the minus, we have the same amount of information. Then, as you can see, a nice big picture. Uh, it's, uh, it's the same size. In color, of course, which is very nice. Here's the fool, then you have like a little message from the being. So for the fool, it would be I'm off on an adventure unknown to me. When I get there, I will collect what I've seen and experienced. And then we have, as I said, like a little story about a being in the card. Then we have the upright uh, meaning and the reversed meaning, if you do read it. And I didn't know if I show the back of the cards, so they are reversible, if you read with reversals. There we go. It's really hard to choose what you want to read or not. You know, I don't know what particular cards somebody else is interested in. So here, for example, for the Eight of Cups, as I say, as I said before, um, there is always that background story. And for this card now, here, Eight of Cups, you know the meaning of the Eight of Cups? Normally, so a beautiful water sprite protects the ocean by taking care of the living creatures that swim below and deep in the water. She also guides sea travelers to their right destination. By doing so much, she feels deeply unappreciated and that there is something missing in her life. The fish and butterflies sense that she is frustrated and restless and that she wants to give up what she loves to do. But they won't have any of it. They do their best to encourage her to move forward and find other areas in life that need her love and protection. And she follows their advice. Together they travel the seven seas and see that everything is as it's supposed to be. 
So, and then for the upright meaning, in a reading, this card represents going out to find something in particular that is needed. You are at a point where something is making you very unhappy and you must leave it at once. At times, you will find yourself needing to concentrate on what is truly important in your life. In many instances, I see that I hold it wrong, sorry. Uh, you will find a deeper meaning regarding what truly matters to you. You may also be seeking hope or a sign from the universe or things to fulfill you. Then for the reverse meaning we have when reversed, this card implies abandoning a commitment or something that you've started. You are wandering around in circles and have not come to a conclusion or a destination. You may also be unable to keep up with the things in your life. So mostly what we have um, in the meanings here is very traditional to the Rider Waite Smith. The stories, either you like them or not, I do like them. Uh, we have a similar approach in the two oracles that I have. There's also always that, that little story about being in the card. So we have that here as well, and as I say, the 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 actual the actual um, meaning is very short, but on point. So again, I think that this, yeah, well, it's hard to say, but personally, I think that is beginner friendly, because you can, when you put so much information about one card on a beginner that can be overwhelming. This is very much on point, you know. Uh, then it depends, of course, if you do with reverse cards or not. I don't, so I don't, you know, but you can have that as the shadow side when your card is in a position, in a, in a negative or more shadowy position. There, I almost forgot. So for the court cards, um, so we have, um, of course, again, a little description, and instead of just a meaning and a reversed meaning, we have the archetype, and then we have also the court card in a situation. So we have have it as a as a description as a person, and then as a situation, which again I would think is very beginner friendly, as many as many people have problems with the court cards. I also like that very much in the Wildwood Tarot. And here we have a similar setup. So I really like that as well and I really wanted to mention that. And again I will read quickly something. Um, I take the King of Swords because it's Aquarius. For the archetype, the King of Swords represents a person who thinks with logic and does not allow ideas and thoughts to be cluttered. It is difficult to let other people mani manipulate them. On the contrary, they are the ones who may manipulate. Uh, when they are being distracted by others, they may find it hard to think ahead and need peace and privacy. So, just a piece here. And as a situation, the King of Swords represents a situ situation that you will have to think about with logic and conviction. Take time from your busy schedule to think um, of a way you can deal with personal problems hindering you from doing what you want to do. On the negative side, you will have to make judgment calls and omit things that are not useful or beneficial for you. This may even involve people who are close to you and so on. So that you have an idea how this is set up. As I said before, uh, because this may attract a younger audience and maybe um, beginners, I, I still would go with um, more the deck with traditional symbols, but I wouldn't say don't take that one. As I said, for me it is down to earth tarot deck really. Um, very much on point, very, very accurate. And of course, I like working with them together with the oracles. And I will try a little spread of this book. So I will shuffle now forever because they are in order again. So see you soon. Still shuffling. <laughs> so I'm facing um, a certain situation today. And 
I chose the set of Beauty, Truth and Light. Alrighty, so now I have my three cards finally. <laughs> and as I said, Beauty, Truth and Light. So the first card is the beauty about is when the book it says about this person or thing, I took it as about this situation. Oh, and I have one of the extra cards, the paranormal, and the keyword is curiosity. Now, let me have a look at the book, because I didn't get this card yet. <laughs> so, in a reading, this card represents the dire need to figure something out. So we're talking about the beauty of it, okay. Things are a mystery to you. Oh yes, they are about this situation. It's a complete mystery, that's true. And you may not be able to solve it. There is a calling from the unknown that summons your attention. Follow it and see what you discover. Okay, that is interesting. A bit of skepticism clouds your beliefs and you feel that you must prove something right or wrong. Either or don't. Don't step on anybody's personal beliefs. Okay, that's interesting. It is really about um, trying to figure something out. And as I go on and try to figure it out, I have to see that as a beautiful thing. Um, because I will explore so much more. Alright. So, the next card is the truth about this situation. Let's have a look. <laughs> Three of Wands with patience. All right, I get it. I hear you, <laughs> and that's why I say they are sometimes so on point. Yes, I get it. <sighs> so yeah, we did already a lot for this situation. I put a lot of effort in it, and it seems like at the moment is not really something that I can do, I just have to be patient. And I get those cards all the time, be patient now. <laughs> so at time I will see how how this will, that there will be an, an, uh, an effort and that there will be progress, but just, you know, I did my work now. Be patient. <sighs> and the last card is the light about this situation. Seven of Pentacles with progress. I really have to stop reading cards at the moment. It's again about waiting, being patient, and see, yes, see the value of the hard work I put in. So there is not really, I cannot rush into it. So see, so we have two cards that, that say actually, um, you know, sit back and, and take a time off. To, uh, see, you did your work. So now, yeah, wait and see. That's what it is. Wait and see. I really stop. Re have to stop to read at the moment because I always get the same messages. So here you can see the tarot. Here's the Oracle of the Shapeshifters. Again, the Australian version. And here's the Oracle of Shadow and Light, also the Australian version, how it works together, and I think it's really beautiful. Um, yeah, they should all be borderless. I really love that. That uh, I have to do a separate, you know, review for, for those cards, if anybody's interested. But ha now you see how they work together, and I really like to... Um, yeah, I use them a lot with the Oracle, as I do anyway with uh, Terra and Oracle, but um, yeah, it's it's nice when it fits so nicely together. So, and again, I really hope that this was helpful and that you could have a good look at all the cards. I really wanted to talk a bit about my own experience with it because, um, yeah, it's really a nice deck, but it's so far off the traditional symbolism. Well, not all of them, but it's quite expensive it's uh, 35 dollars sorry you can see that uh yeah i guess it was more or less the same it was 30 euros something 
Um, yeah, so everybody has their own experiences with those kinds of decks, of course, with every deck. But it's so far off of the traditional symbolism. Not all of them, but definitely cards, well, as it is pre-existing artwork, of course, it is not completely meant to be a tarot. Uh, a lot of people are also mentioned that they want to use it as an oracle or just cut off the, the titles. Um, yeah, personally, I don't want to do that. I want to definitely use it as a as a tarot deck because it works for me, personal. And as I said, very down to earth, very uh, very accurate, very on point. So I, I really do like that. Yeah. So thank you so much for watching. Much, much love and blessings and bye.